Hi guys, uh, this video for you today here I think is really important because I've searched the internet and there's like only one other review on this fragrance uh, from a person who is not, as I call it, corrupt. Because I know that the house of Lorga Parfums from Paris, I think it's, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's from Paris, yeah, it says Paris, actually, it's French. Um, it's called Musk Palawan, this fragrance, and I think it's a great fragrance, but I can tell that they have been typically sending influencers, you know, like either three full bottles and the rest uh, samples, or one full bottle and a discovery kit to a lot of influencers. And I can just so tell that um, getting free bottles will take you in a positive direction. Um, you would never say, you know, that I can't stand this fragrance or you think this sucks or it's just not worth the price or whatever. And I've only found one person and she calls herself the Fragrant Friend J. And I think you should check her out because I think it's listening, it's like listening to like a really good friend to just tell you your her honest opinions. And she, for example, said that a sister fragrance from the same collection called Rose Dansons, I think, has a plasticky vibe. That's when I knew, okay, she's not, you know, she hasn't been uh, sent this material. She had a discovery set and that she had bought it herself. That was pretty obvious. Another thing was that she only had like 15 subscribers. I think I was number 15. Uh, and I really, really appreciate these kind of reviews. Okay, so here's mine. This is a really expensive fragrance. I just wanna point that out because I think it's something to take into consideration. And I am not sure that I would have paid full price for this. It's uh, like 250 euros um, for 65 mil. It looks like a pretty big bottle, but as you can see that it starts like here. So it's not as big as it may seem. It has great presentation. It's got a great big heavy top. Um, I mean, it weighs a ton and so does the bottle. So it really feels like luxury. Um, this is a fragrance also is not for everyone. It is not a safe blind buy, not that any fragrance is, but this definitely is not. It's a fragrance that I will use quite seldom. It's like a vacation kind of fragrance. But I had a little sample from a friend from this very bottle because she had bought it secondhand and she couldn't, she just couldn't deal with it. It was just too much for her. She tried many times, it just didn't work for her. And I kept, you know, I kept trying this little tiny, tiny sample lasted me like four wearings. So it really, you can really tell that this is, has a high concentration of perfume. Uh, it's an extra de parfum. And you can really tell. Uh, the projection is great, the longevity is great, and I really got so hooked on this smell. Although it did take a little getting used to. At first sniff, it wasn't really a love at first sniff, but it was kind of like, oh, I feel intrigued at first sniff. So it has kind of like a green citrus kind of opening. And then there's in the mid, it has these like tropical fruits and flowers. Um, strangely enough, there are no fruits listed. It might be the honey in there that gives it this, but I'm sure it has like exotic fruits. I think I saw even several people also mention that they could, they could tell. I'm not sure if it's like, you know, if it's passion fruit or it's mango or pineapple or um, maybe some fruits that I don't even know what it is, but it has kind of a green quality to it. It has a hint of coconut. It has vanilla, honey, and musk, of course. Jasmine, and then sea notes. I think it has kind of like an ambergris feeling and a little bit of like a marine kind of feeling to it. Um, and I get that saltiness vibe from it. So it definitely is a beach scent, but in kind of a non sunscreeny kind of way. It doesn't smell like Bronze Goddess or Beach Walk. Um, it's more like a, and it doesn't smell like Aqua di Sale. It doesn't, you know, it smells, it smells good. It doesn't smell like seaweed and that kind of thing. But it's just, I just think it's so, so beautiful. And I went through this sample. Um, I wore it many times before actually buying it, but I did not pay the full price and don't know if I would. I would probably make myself go through a whole decant, and then maybe after that, I would get a full bottle for that price because I am really hooked on the smell. Um, but I don't think I'll be wearing it that often, but when I wear it, I will feel like really special. Like nobody is gonna smell like me. Uh, I think this is super, super unique. I can't compare it really with anything. Well, I'm not gonna say that. I do actually compare it. I have a, a fragrance, a decant of a fragrance from uh, Guerlain's private line uh, that's called Embrance de Lang. That a little bit, there's a little bit of an overlap in the notes, because this also has Ylang Ylang and some like marine kind of notes. Although this is just, it's beautiful and a little bit of an, e kind of an easier kind of wear, but it's not as exciting. 
as um, as the Musk Palawan. So, I mean, this one I wouldn't even consider going full bottle. It's just too, it's more like sophisticated, a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more of a people pleaser. I think like anybody, ever anybody would say that this smells good for sure. Uh, and those kind of fragrances I typically get kind of bored with. So this one I think will be like, it's much, it's much more special. It feels a, like a void. It, it feels a gap in my collection, definitely. And the next fragrance I'd like to share with you is kind of in the same ballpark. And there's also a little bit of an overlap, although it's a very, very easy wear. And I don't know if you've heard of this. It's discontinued um, like since quite a few years back and it's called Ambergris. And it's from the house of um, Balmain from Paris, also French. Um, I just swapped this with a friend. And I think that when I smelled it, I was like, wait, this is like marine as well. Um, I mean, it's called ambergris. Uh, and someone said it doesn't smell anything like real ambergris. And I've never smelled real ambergris, but I know like about it in perfumery. And I think it does smell like ambergris. Um, and it definitely has that kind of, it smells a little bit like skin. I saw someone call it sex in a bottle. And I, even if I think that sounds quite ridiculous, I can understand it in this one because it's kind of like a second skin. And it's kind of like, um, okay, so if this one, the Musk Palawan is kind of like, I can imagine myself on a beach, like maybe sipping a tropical drink, then this one would be like walking along a rocky beach on my own, um, maybe in a little bit more, um, in like a little bit more of a rough climate with bigger waves maybe, and um, maybe it's a little overcast. It's not like a sunscreeny uh, beach vacation kind of scent as much as the other, but I do get that marine kind of vibe from it. Although many other people online have described it as like a Christmas scent where you can really feel the cinnamon. And I don't think it has, let's see, cinnamon is not even listed. Uh, but it does have like notes. It's pretty oriental at the same time as, as it's really kind of skin-like. But it has myrrh, it has pink pepper, sage, tuberose, incense, frangipani. So the other one has ylang ylang and this one has frangipani. So they're kind of a little bit in the same similar kind of tropical type of flower. It has benzoin. The other one has vanilla. Um, I think they might both have ambergris, especially this one <laughs> for sure has it, and cedar and tonka. So this one has like... It's kind of, it has a really, I cannot pick out the notes individually, but together it's just, it forms a really, really nice composition where it's all so soft and it's such an easy wear. It's just like, I loved it at first sniff and it doesn't, I don't think it changes that much on the skin. It just kind of, it's just beautiful from beginning to end. Um, I think that this other one, uh, Musk Palawan, is more of a like, it's kind of really green from the beginning and then it kind of changes. It's really interesting in that way because it has its different phases. But this one is like, it's just good from beginning to end. And I will cherish these drops because it, it'll be hard to get a bottle. I saw a bottle on eBay for like ridiculous sum of money, like $360. But when it when they had it on the market, it was like, around $100 was like the full retail price, but I heard many people speaking of it as look, you know, look around for deals because it's like always on sale. So you can get it like for, for nothing, um, which is now not the case anymore. But I'm sure that there are um, bottles still, you know, being circulated, I think, of this fragrance. And I think it's quite unisex, although I think of Fragrantica, many say it leans a little more feminine and it was marketed towards women when it came out. But I think it's just, it's just beautiful. I felt this is definitely a love it for sniff. Um, I think that that, I will really love that for years to come. Such a good easy wear, yet so, so different. So those were my uh, choices here for, um, I mean, they're kind of like beach fragrances, vacation fragrances, but not in that real sunscreeny, beachy kind of way that are like overly coconutty or uh, sunscreeny kind of way. Um, and I really didn't have anything like that. I used to own a bottle of Beach Walk, but I just kind of got sick of it. I just thought it was too simple and I've, I grew out of it. I still think it's beautiful, but I just, uh, I need something more of a challenge now. And I think definitely this is a little bit of a challenge still. And that's why I like it so much. I kind of like to be a little bit bothered, like a little bit, 
it has a real greenness to it. It has a kind of a milkiness as well. Like it could be fig, but it's not. I mean, it's not, fig is not listed. It's like it's honey and vanilla and, but it never goes too sweet. And I think it's because of like the citrus in the top and because of the greenness and the salty notes, it all kind of stays. I really don't like my fragrances too sweet. Like what I really don't like is like caramel and that kind of sweetness. This is nothing like that. This is just like, I just think it's so, so, so darn good. But I could tell like, even though I feel like the perfume guy is corrupt and he, I mean, I, he, he doesn't, I'm not saying that he's actually camouflaging the fact that they, you know, they've re they reached out to me and they gave me these bottles, but I'll give you, I'm gonna give you my honest opinion anyway. And I could tell he didn't like it. And, but he said, it's, oh, it's, but it's still quite enjoyable. I, I could never see him wearing it. I could tell that he was trying to like be polite uh, to the to the house because he doesn't want to trash it because he wants to be you know give be that they should keep sending him bottles, but uh, I really I pr appreciate so much more the uh, the fragrance what did she call herself the fragrance friend um, Jay the fragrance God I can't remember now uh, the way she says you know when something has a plasticky note or uh, the bottle sucks or whatever it's just like you can really tell when someone is being totally honest with you. And I just, I'm really looking for more of those kind of reviews. I, they give me so much more. I'm not gonna waste my time with people that are given this and given that. It, it just is not genuine to me. And like Chris from Fragmental, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna listen to him anymore. It doesn't give me anything. And I don't care how well done it is or it's edited and has nice background music. It just bothers me, the background music. Well, now my cat is meowing and that's not a good background sound. <laughs> anyway, that was all for today, guys.